So a couple years ago, I did some experiments in the use of temperature and humidity sensors to log environmental conditions in a shallow dirt basin. I was interested in understanding what environmental conditions look like when the basin was left uncovered to bake in the sun. To do this, I used sensors to monitor ambient air temperature and humidity, and both soil temperature and humidity at depths of 1 and 6 inches. I then added a thin layer of mulch collected from ground up yard waste and trimmings. In summary, I discovered mulch can have a significant impact on buffering soil temperature and humidity over time. Further details are summarized in the video and write up in the description of this video. Suffice it to say that soils are a lot like living organisms. They sweat available moisture to cool and are susceptible to heat stroke if left uncovered to bake in the sun. Given the ongoing drought in the southwest, I thought it might be interesting to revisit this experiment by building a permanent installation that could be monitored and experimented with over multiple seasons rather than just a couple of months. Unfortunately, my old equipment was returned to my former employer and my basin had been taken over by native grasses for feeding my desert tortoise. As a result, I'd have to build a new instrument from scratch and find a new site for logging data. In response, here's the new instrument developed for my next batch of experiments. It consists of three capacitive soil moisture sensors coupled with four DS18B320 temperature sensors mounted on a mahogany staff. The instrument also includes a BME-280 sensor for measuring ambient air temperature, humidity, and pressure. The sensors are driven and logged by a Feather Ada logger coupled with a real-time clock for time stamping data and an OLED for reading values in real time. The system is powered by a 2200 milliamp hour battery that's topped off by a solar LiPo charger powered by a 6 volt 3.5 watt solar panel similar to the solar installations I've successfully deployed in the past. And here's the instrument installed in a new basin developed for long-term monitoring in my backyard. As installed, it will log temperature and soil moisture from the ground to a depth of 15 inches. I also included additional sensors to measure ambient air temperature, humidity, and pressure using a BME-280 sensor installed 28 inches above ground surface. During construction, I took this picture, which shows where the temperature sensors are mounted on the staff, as well as this photo showing where the capacitive soil moisture sensors are installed, resulting in this setup. And you'll notice that the sensors do have some electronics that are exposed to the environment. And uh, later on, I went ahead and I sealed uh, those exposed components uh, using some electronic grade silicone. At this point, I'll still need to install the BME-280 as well as a box with the electronics for data logging. Again, this design should help me characterize soil to a depth of 15 inches, as well as the air column above ground at 28 inches. Finally, the sensor should respond to changes in soil moisture content, and thus help me understand soil and air dynamics resulting from various experiments planned for the future. And here's the data logger mounted on a feather terminal breakout, which is going to make attaching all those wires much easier as opposed to soldering connections. And here it is cleaned up a little bit. Um, there are the three capacitive soil moisture sensors down at the end, and I'm getting good readings on all three of them. And there they are at the bottom. You can see the white wires coming into the uh, plugs for the capacitive soil moisture sensors. I brought it indoors just to uh, see how it's doing overall. And you can see here that uh, all the data that's being reported makes sense. All the values are relatively close to one another. So the uh, sensors appear to be working okay as wired. I subsequently ran various experiments to ensure the sensors were operating reasonably within acceptable margins of error for my purposes, using a glass thermometer as my control for comparison. Once I confirmed everything was working within tolerances, I mounted the electronics in a box to include a spare protoboard for mapping additional sensors at a later date. I then added a crossbeam to the staff for helping me mount the new electronics now situated in their box. And once the box was mounted, I fed the signal wires through a hole in the bottom. And here's the completed instrument prior to attaching a solar panel. 
Okay, I went ahead and I used one of these ram mounts to uh, mount this solar panel on top of this box. So that's looking pretty good. And then I went ahead and I drilled this 3 8 inch hole to accept the plug for the solar panel to get it inside the box. And I had to use that because this uh, little watertight um, fitting that I had was just too small to, uh, to accept that plug. So there was no other way to do it. I'd have to cut this cable and reattach it, you know, for it to be compatible with this. I just didn't want to deal with that. So I can always uh, fill that in with a little bit um, of this stuff right here. I deem it necessary. All right. All right. Uh, so now I went ahead and I just moved this to my, uh, to my yard just so I can start taking advantage of that wonderful sun up there to start topping off this battery. And uh, we're going to leave it here overnight. So I might as well just run a few experiments. So I went ahead and I filled this bucket with uh, some sand from the Santa Cruz River. And I'm just going to let this just sit here and uh, log data. And you can see that uh, two of the temperature sensors are buried. One is just above the ground and another one is a little bit higher. And then, of course, I've got the sensors in this little PVC, too. If you can see it in there. Yep. In any event, let's turn this on and just have some fun collecting some data in my backyard. All right, it's Sunday, April 30th at about 1130. Let's see if I take this thermometer out which reads 21 22 24 degrees celsius at depth and i just leave it here for a few minutes okay and this column that i have right here is for the temperature sensor that's deepest on that uh on that rod Let's see what we've got. We've got 22 and a half degrees, and I think I measured 24 when I was out there uh, with the thermometer when I pulled it right out of the ground. So a little bit of difference. Um, there's a little bit of uh, inaccuracy, both with respect to the thermometer as well as the sensor. And that's probably uh, what's yielding the difference in overall temperature between the two sensors. So. Uh, but, you know, it's within the ballpark. Um, it gives me a, a general idea of what's going on, enough confidence to uh, work with this data for my purposes. I've got the column with air temperature highlighted here. Let's scroll down to the very bottom of the data set. And here it says that my temperature is uh, about 37.81. So... Let's go back outside and take a look at what the um, thermometer says. Okay, and I've been holding this thermometer out here in the uh, ambient air, pretty much in the shade. And yeah, it's just a hair under 37. So and I'm just gonna put my hand on this. And this is warmer than the ambient air temperature. So this is probably picking up heat and biasing my results. So. And uh, one way to remove a little bit of that bias, perhaps, is to uh, eliminate this piece right here. So just hacksaw this off and attach it up here so I don't have all this mass right here getting hot in the sun and creating this thermal hot bubble of air that might be biasing my results. All right, folks, so I went ahead and I removed some of that thermal mass. I'll give this 24 hours to equilibrate. Come back out here at about the same time and compare things and see how they're doing. I can go ahead and turn this thing back on. So that tells me that a record was written. So everything's working okay. All right, so we'll come back and check tomorrow, see if that helped. All done. It's May 1st at 11 a.m. Let's see what we got for temperature. Looks like it's 
24 degrees Celsius uh, at depth. So, okay, the thermometer's been out for about four minutes and I'm reading 31 degrees. And it is a little hazier today. So uh, I also noticed that this isn't quite as warm as it was yesterday. So uh, the results should compare fairly well with uh, with what my thermometer is, uh, is measuring. All right, folks, and it looks like at about 1049, the temperature was 32.87. So uh, looks like it's been hovering between about 31 and a half and 32.87. So it looks like I've just got a little bit of bias right now, the way that system is set up. So one way to address it is just to shave a degree Celsius off all the air temp uh, readings. And that should uh, make a little bit more sense for what's actually uh, present in my uh, in my installation. So we're, we're going to go ahead and do that. On the bright side, the uh, temperature at depth uh, matched exactly what I saw on the thermometer, 24 degrees. All right, folks, so I'm gonna update the code on this little data logger. Here are the updates, uploading right now. Done uploading. So this is now gonna reset. Let's see what we got. Cool, I can see air temperature and deep temperature on the OLED now, so that's gonna make uh, checking temperatures much easier for me. That says my temperature, air temperature is 31.16. Let's see what we got over here. We got just a hair over 31 degrees. That feels pretty good to me. All right, so there is a hole in the bottom of this bucket for drainage. So let's go ahead and get things wet. This is like playing in a sandbox for adults getting to do all these cool experiments. And you can see my capacitive soil moisture sensors exposed right there at the top. I'll cover it up. But let's just get some water flowing through this soil column. See really good drainage because it's sand. I'll go ahead and cover that sensor. Add a little bit more water here, there, and all around. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, so this hole's pretty much uh, just about ready. Um, I trimmed back the, uh, the Carolina Jasmine a little bit to not influence my readings. This isn't a perfect site to do something like this. I'd prefer to be like in an open field where nothing else might influence my readings, but this is about as good as I can do in my yard in terms of keeping it out of the way of the kids and the tortoise and everything else I've got going on, so. All right. And the following slides are just to show you the relative location of the various sensors relative to ground, as well as how they're called out in code 
both in the uh, spreadsheets that I'll share as well as the uh, sample sketch included in the description of this video. All right, folks, so it's been about three months that I've been working on this project and it's finally installed and ready to go. It's been collecting data successfully for about three days. Um, so now comes the fun part. Um, we can start doing some experiments, maybe playing with uh, different kinds of mulches, maybe uh, comparing maybe plywood, you know, how is that going to impact the, uh, the, the soil temperature and the air temperature right above it? Um, I was thinking about adding NeoPixels um, to basically give me a visual indication of how dry the soil is. And we have the, the roots show up brown or blue, depending on whether there's moisture in the ground, and then have the leaves uh, do the same, be brown or blue, depending on whether the air is humid or dry. Maybe we can download the data off this thing and maybe uh, turn it into music, who knows? Um, but uh, I'm really interested in uh, having a permanent installation that I can play with over time uh, to see how we can better communicate and respond to uh, environmental conditions and how, how we can, might make things a little bit more resilient for climate change. So, so that's about it for this chapter. Uh, this is the first chapter of a very long journey that I'll be taking. Um, but uh, in any event, if you folks have any ideas or if you want to keep updated on what we're doing, please comment and or subscribe. All right, we'll look forward to seeing you next time.